For those of you who prefer not to be on screen, please take a moment to turn off your cameras at this time by clicking on the camera icon at the bottom center of your screen. My name is Ari Engelberg. I work in DNR's Chesapeake and Coastal Services. And today, we're going to be providing an overview for this year's Grants Gateway applicants on the FieldDoc software platform. FieldDoc is a software that has been developed by the Commons. John Dawes, the Executive Director of the Commons, will be providing an overview of the FieldDoc today, including, including time for questions. My colleague, Marla Atkinson, will also be helping coordinate any questions or IT issues that arise. This webinar will also be posted online for those of us who weren't able to be here today. Thanks again very much for being here. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to John to get things kicked off. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Ari. And uh, really appreciate everybody joining uh, on a Friday, a beautiful day out there, at least up here in Pennsylvania. Um, I'm going to just cover off quickly on just some webinar logistics with the Google Meet platform. Um, and Marlo, feel free to tag in if I miss anything. Um, but just you know, to give you guys an overview of Google Meet, which we're using to host this webinar, um, you know, most of the uh, administrative controls that you need, you should be able to find in the bottom navigation. Um, so uh, helpful items would be, uh, you know, uh, clicking on the mic on the far left there uh, to mute or unmute yourself. Uh, turning the camera on or off is already indicated using the camera button. There's also uh, closed captioning um, that can be uh, turned on or off uh, for um, voiceover users that require that uh, feature set. And then also um, really helpful, we'll be taking uh, momentary pauses between each uh, parts of the field doc training, which I'll, I'll cover off on in a second. Uh, but uh, as you have questions, it's super helpful if you can raise your hand uh, or um, utilize the uh, chat function uh, to send messages, which uh, Marlo and myself will be doing the best of our, our ability to, to sort of monitor that chat box. Um, and then, of course, big red button is to leave the meeting um, and uh, we'll be, uh, you know, mainly handling most of the, uh, the screen sharing capabilities in this in this meeting. Um, but those are uh, the main overview uh, items for uh, utilizing Google Meet. I don't know, Marlo, if there's anything else that I missed, um, please feel free to, to sub in. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, um, that was great. Um, I just want to add one thing that if you are just you know, watching the presentation, please make sure you're on mute. Um, we are going to have question portions, and we do encourage people to chime in and ask their questions on video, or you can use the chat. Um, if people aren't muted and there's background noise, I may mute you, and then you have to obviously unmute yourself. So that I know that's confused some people before. So you may get like a warning that I've muted you um, in case in case you're not. So just wanted to give people that heads up. Awesome, great. Uh, so so just to dive in uh, to the uh, field doc overview and platform, um, I, I'd like to just give you kind of a quick rundown of what we'll cover today. Um, and we have limited time. Uh, there's uh, a number of, of really useful feature sets in field doc for uh, measuring and tracking uh, project Im implementation. But we're going to cover off on the main pieces that you need to set you up well for your Chesapeake and Atlantic Coastal Based Trust Fund application. Um, so today, what we'll be going through is creating a project in the field doc platform. Uh, in that project, we'll create a series of BMPs um, and also uh, show how to get uh, nutrient sediment load reductions. And then we'll also cover off on a number of items about how to get those respective models to run efficiently. And I'll be working through a number of live examples um, the other thing, too, uh, is we'll provide sort of an overview of uh, our support process for how we can help you uh, getting, uh, getting your information in um, for application and, um, and cover off on those details as well. And then lastly, but not least, um, we'll also uh, share how you can uh, take your field doc project that you've created, uh, create a PDF out of that, and, and send that along with your grant application. So. Um, just a quick overview in terms of how FieldDoc is structured. Um, so FieldDoc is a platform that is utilized to uh, track and measure uh, BMP implementation associated with grant-funded restoration projects. And sort of the top of the hierarchy is our program 
module. So we'll be uh, sharing, you know, how you create your project and relate it to the appropriate program, which in this case will be uh, Maryland's Chesapeake and Atlantic Coastal Base Trust Fund. Um, the next set of information is projects. So this is what you guys will be creating uh, within the field doc system for consideration of your grant. Uh, and what's really useful about projects is it organizes all the places that you're working in the BMPs uh, into a convenient folder as a way to classify and detail your work. Uh, the other thing that projects does is it, it creates a means to be able to aggregate and estimate your respective nutrient sediment load reductions. Uh, sites is an optional way of organization that I'll share with you, although it is not a requirement. So we'll be spending very little time on sites. And then practices, um, this is where a majority of the work happens uh, in terms of generating uh, your nutrient sediment load reductions. These are the specific uh, BMPs that you would uh, plan to implement uh, if you are awarded funding with your respective work. And um, without getting too conceptual, um, the way that uh, information sort of flows in field doc is that you uh, create your respective practice um, based on a number of factors, uh, such as data that you provide, uh, practice location, uh, we're able to run it through models to generate uh, nutrient sediment load reductions. Uh, we have models that run specifically for stream restoration, and then uh, also models that estimate nutrient sediment load reductions uh, for uh, general Chesapeake BMPs. Um, based on the, the cast isolation scenario tables. And I'll speak a little bit more about that um, in the presentation. So just to transition over, um, this is sort of the high level uh, conceptual framing of field doc. And let me go ahead and pull up um, where we start and dive in uh, to the platform. Uh, and then again, um, I'm going to go through this in a stepwise process. So we're going to first cover off on registration and just general navigation of the system, and then I'll open it up for questions. Um, so just to kick things off uh, to get started with Field Doc, you'll want to go to fielddoc.org. Uh, and that is where uh, Field Doc will uh, default you uh, to a login screen uh, where if you have an account, um, you can use your email and password that you've established and log in. If you're a new field doc user, this little sign up button on the bottom uh, will take you to the registration page where uh, you put in your first name, last name, email, and create a password and sign up. Um, one important piece is that uh, with field doc, we are working to establish a, a set of verified users. Um, so the login will not be instant. Um, we will be uh, notified by email uh, and then confirm and verify your account uh, from which we'll then notify you and you'll be able to log in. Um, so uh, effectively, if you haven't logged into Field Doc for a while and uh, you're having issues with the login, um, I'd highly recommend reaching out to support at fielddoc.org where we can make sure your account is verified and you'll be able to log into the system. So since I have an, an account, I'm going to go ahead and log in to Field Doc, and I will uh, kind of quickly cover off on the general um, navigation of, of the system, and then we can open it up for questions here. Um, so in the case of Field Doc, when you first log in, um, you will be brought to your home page. And uh, with respect to your home page, this is where if you've been tied to any other programs, uh, such as like National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, uh, or have applied to other uh, grant programs that are in the system, you should see a list of these programs here. Um, I'm logged into my administrator account, so I have like a myriad of programs, uh, but uh, yours should look a lot uh, less complicated than this with just the programs that you've applied to. And then down here uh, will be a list of the most recent projects in chronological order that you've uh, either edited or, or created in the system. Uh, the side navigation, this is where uh, you can actually step through a series of information just to keep your information current. Um, and this is relative to your, your own organization and yourself. Um, so our system will, uh, just for security, track 
um, who uh, members of your organization are and their respective roles. Um, and then also uh, you have the ability to create uh, or to keep all of your organization information current. So if you wanna uh, add an organization name, description, contact email and website, um, you can actually uh, do that within the system. And it's, a, it's sort of a best practice to do that because it um, really puts an organization uh, to the practice information that, that is being uh, completed and entered into, into the system. Uh, and then the same for users, uh, it follows the same approach where uh, this is your account and uh, you have the ability to edit uh, all of your uh, user information such as first name, last name, title, uh, you can put in a brief bio uh, and and that uh, allows us to, again, sort of put a person to the, to the uh, project info that's being entered in the field doc. The next set of information, and this is where we're gonna be spending um, a majority of our time, is really in this projects list and projects module. And um, this is really the launching point for creating your project and your application. Um, for the Chesapeake and Atlantic Coastal Base Trust Fund. And uh, really this is where uh, a project will be created. And then we can add effectively a number of BMPs to that project. So my next step, I'll be walking you guys through that project creation process, but I wanna pause there for a second and just make sure there aren't any questions about login uh, or the basic navigation of the system. So any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Cool. And again, as you guys have questions um, at each of the breaks, we can definitely handle those. Um, and then we'll also make sure time is allocated at the end just to cover off on anything that we've missed. Um, so great. So I'll, I'll keep uh, forging ahead here. Um, and again, uh, what I'm going to do to walk you all through this uh, process is we're going to create a project uh, just as if we were creating a project for our grant application to MDNR. Um, so the first step is once you're logged in, um, the easiest way to get started with a project is going to your projects view here, which I've navigated to. So you can click on this and it'll bring you to your project page. Um, each of these cards represents a project. And um, I'll give you guys an example of a finished one so you can get a sense of what, what we're looking at here and what really the, um, the end project looks like. So uh, for the sake of this webinar, I've actually created um, just this example one. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this project summary button. It's uh, identified by the, uh, the little mosaic squares. And this will actually launch um, the full project overview of what I've created. Um, so when I click on that, it'll bring me in to the project view here. And some, some things to keep in mind that are just helpful navigation items is that if I mouse over any of these buttons and you're not sure of what they do, uh, they will actually give you information on what that expected behavior is. And also on our little breadcrumbs trail here, um, we can actually bounce back and forth uh, to uh, where we came from. So we've navigated into our project overview here. And I can see that I have uh, roughly four best management practices that have been added to this project by this uh, respective map here. So this is a project summary overview. And this is giving you um, all of the effective metrics for the BMPs that I've planned to implement. Uh, and then down here, our projects are arranged so that you have a listing of all of the practices that have been added. Uh, so we can see we added a stream restoration practice, uh, urban forest buffer, uh, stormwater performance treatment, uh, and then also uh, urban forest buffer. And we'll create a few of these, uh, but just for the sake of this demonstration, wanted to give you an idea of what we're kind of shooting for. The uh, the other really important piece about projects is um, is that we're uh, we're creating this to effectively establish our nutrient sentiment load reductions, and then this is the page that we will actually create uh, as a PDF um, to effectively uh, submit with our grant application. 
So uh, that's, in general, the project overview. And so um, I'm going to open it up one more time for questions here, and then we'll dive in and actually uh, create, create our own so you guys can see what that looks like. So any questions? It sounds like something popped up in the chat. So I don't know um, if you guys wouldn't mind reading it out to me. Um, John, actually, Linda has raised her hand. So Linda, if you want to chime in with a question, you're more than welcome. Yeah. Hi. Um, so yeah, I was the person. I'm not able to get into field docs today. I was in it literally like two days ago. So I'm not sure okay. what's going on. Um, so I am a fairly new user. And my initial question right now is, so I created a new project. When does it go from draft to like existing? See how it says draft there? Yep. Mine currently still says draft. Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. Um, this is a, a control that is actually managed by uh, Maryland DNR. Um, for the sake of your proposal, uh, you, you don't necessarily need to worry about this status. Um, MDNR staff has the ability to actually toggle that as administrators of the program. So uh, for them, and, and this is also for myself as an administrator, um, I can change that project status. But um, I, I'll defer to Ari, but I think for the sake of this application round, um, as long as you've kind of created your full uh, project and submitted the PDF, as we'll show here in this webinar, um, you should be good to go. And then uh, DNR staff can uh, update that respective status. OK, great. Thank you. I just wasn't sure if that was something that I should be doing or how to, yep. I couldn't figure out how to get it done. <laughs> yeah, okay, no so worries. And, and, uh, and also, um, just on the login issue, um, definitely feel free to reach out to support we can, or if you already have, um, we'll make sure that that's ticketed and that you're able to be verified and get in. Um, but um, that's something we're um, on the support side, we're nine to five Monday through Friday and, and usually have a one day resolution time. And I'll, I'll cover off on that a bit more here um, further down, down the road. Okay, yeah, it looks like um, I'm going to contact Ari after the meeting. But okay. Thank you. Cool. Just kind of frustrating because uh, I was in there. <laughs> gotcha. Um, great. So let me uh, let me dive in here and I'll um, create an example project so that you all can kind of see what that process looks like. Um, so again, from my projects overview page, I'm going to start by clicking this uh, black create button. And I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to give this a project title. It's really a best uh, practice to use the same project title as you are for your grant application. So I'm just going to call this uh, John's example. And sorry, I can't talk and type. I'm really bad at that. Um, so I'm going to just call it uh, John's example and DNR proposal. Um, and again, this would match uh, the grant application uh, project title. The next step is to then add your program. So if I start typing Chesapeake, uh, I should get a list of programs that match my criteria. And I'm going to pick Chesapeake and Atlantic Coastal Based Trust Fund and save. Once I save that, uh, that initial project, it should bring you to your edit project page where you can then uh, add a project description. And this is really just a, a summary of um, the project that you uh, that you are working to apply for funds. Um, if you have a small, uh, you know, two to three sentence uh, project summary, you'd want to put that in this description. Uh, so I'm just going to say project summary goes here for now. And then the next step is to then save that respective uh, project uh, view. And there are a couple of different options for getting back to where you started. So you can always click on this uh, project summary button. Uh, or in the breadcrumb trail, if I want to go back to my example project, then we can see that I've created this, uh, this draft folder or project uh, to sort of house all of my respective BMPs. Uh, so again, um, you know, if we nav away from this, uh, we'll see in my latest projects list, here it is, I've created it, it's still an empty shell, uh, but we can always get back to it um, by the project list um, pretty efficiently. And so that's sort of how you create that first uh, project. 
Another helpful tip is if you realize, oh man, like I put a typo in the title or I wanna update my project summary, I can always click on this little pencil here and this will let me go back uh, to edit any of those respective details. A really important piece is to hit that save button uh, to make sure that those changes are reflected. Um, so any questions about the project setup step? Cool. So, um, so the next step is we have our blank canvas here, which is really neat. And um, I always feel like Bob Ross in this step, but uh, we need to add our respective BMPs. And so um, the next step here is to, just like we did with our project summary, uh, click on this little create button uh, next to our practices. And so I'm gonna walk you guys through um, you know, some of the more uh, a simple practice first, and then we'll do a, a little bit more of an advanced one um, with stream restoration uh, and runoff reduction, um, or, or I'm sorry, the stormwater performance standard. Uh, but let's go ahead and start by creating our first practice. Um, so our first step is uh, we're gonna do an example uh, urban forest buffer. And from here, I will uh, save uh, that respective practice. And then um, just like I did in the uh, project summary, uh, you're gonna wanna put a practice description uh, in place here. And then this is where it's a, it's a really important next step. Um, we wanna relate this practice or this respective work to uh, the list of Bay program practices. Uh, and this is really uh, an efficient step because it allows us to then start establishing uh, our respective models or calculations with that practice for nutrient and sediment load reduction. So once I click on that uh, practice type link, it will launch this table view of all the different practices. And we can actually filter or search uh, for the practice that we're looking for. Uh, so if I start uh, typing in uh, urban or I do uh, forest, um, this will actually filter our list uh, based on the criteria that I type in. And so again, you can uh, we've expanded these filters uh, to let you filter by um, name, group, uh, or the respective definition. Uh, and again, if you have questions about you know what that BMP definition is, you can actually go into the description and click on the, the link and it will give you um, the respective definition of that practice for more information. And again, if you guys have questions on you know how your work maps uh, to this list, definitely feel free to reach out to myself or Ari. Um, we're happy to support that and, and kind of figure out um, how the respective BMP that you're implementing maps to this standard list. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick urban forest buffer and save it. And then once I'm done, um, I'll just go to the bottom and hit the save button here. And at this point, um, field doc will actually take you to the next step, uh, which is then mapping uh, the footprint of your practice. So um, essentially what field doc will do is launch a map where you can then start to zoom into the location of where you're working. Um, and without going too fast here, um, if I click on this little magnifying glass, this is where I can actually get kind of close to a place where, where I'm uh, working. So if I type in um, Dromelda Hills, so let me do Dromelda Hills in Silver Spring, Maryland. And this will take me uh, to a respective place. And I can do a couple of different things here by clicking on the layers list. So we default to a street view, but it's often helpful to um, be able to see up close uh, the respective uh, imagery or uh, satellite imagery so that you can kind of reference where you're working. Um, we also have support um, with uh, DNR's partnership. We've added uh, parcel boundaries um, the NHD flow lines, as well as Maryland's uh, six inch imagery layer service. So these layers can actually be turned on and off um, as, as needed uh, for 
um, for referencing uh, your respective project. And so from here, um, my next step is then to go ahead and draw the footprint of my practice. So I'll click on this polygon draw tool, and I'm gonna just go ahead and sketch out the footprint of my buffer. And there are a couple of ways to do this. So again, if you don't have GIS capacity in-house, uh, the map draw tools are really, really helpful. However, if you do have um, you know, a footprint of your practice as a shapefile or a GeoJSON file, that can be imported into the system as well. Um, and so I'm gonna draw uh, my footprint and go ahead and save the changes. And so now I should have um, my respective footprint of the forest buffer that I'm working. And so with those changes saved, um, it's safe for me to go ahead and close out. And right off the bat now, we can start to see our nutrient and sediment load reductions populating uh, based on the data and the information I've provided. So um, this is effectively you know, a more simple practice in that um, based off of the practice type name and the location, um, we can get enough information to generate these nutrient sediment load reductions. Um, and then lastly, if I bump uh, back up to my practice view here, I can see that my, my project now consists of a, um, a practice that I've inputted, and we are now starting to see these metrics flowing into this project summary. So this is all looking really good right now um, and in a great spot uh, for the next step. Uh, so, you know, Again, just to summarize uh, where we started and where we went through, we created a project and then we entered in our respective practice information. And so now anytime I start to add additional practice footprints and practices to my project, our metrics will uh, roll up in our project summary view. So um, I know that was a lot, uh, but I, I wanna pause and, and definitely answer any questions that you all have. And then we can tackle maybe some of the more um, complex practices in field doc. So any any questions or, or comments on that front? John, we had two questions in the chat. Um, Brandon asked, is there a good way to upload shape files? Polygons are hit or miss for me on whether they upload or not. I export from Civil 3D, then zip to shape file. Yep. Yeah, so uh, right now, the way that um, our, we've actually updated our shapefile ser upload service to be uh, much more robust. And um, at this stage, uh, if you had a batch of practice footprints uh, where each row in your shapefile is a practice footprint, you can actually click on this upload file button and it should bring in that respective uh, shapefile. So, Important tips are just making sure in that zip file that you have all of the required file types. Um, we also uh, accept the GeoJSON file. Um, and then, you know, just making sure your projection is defined. Um, so, you know, definitely we've, we've taken a lot of steps to improve this service and make it more reliable. Uh, if you still bump into issues, definitely feel free to reach out and we can help you get uh, all of those footprints imported into the system. Okay, and one more. Um, Karen asked, for stormwater BMPs, do you draw the surface area of the BMP or the drainage area to the BMP? Branded, I'm now noticing Brandon answered surface area of BMP in here as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So, sorry to in interject. Um, that's actually going to be the drainage area for stormwater BMPs, such as like the runoff reduction BMPs or stormwater ponds. Yep, that's correct. And, that, and, that, and that'll be clarified in the definition, Karen, as well of the of the practice, which John showed us earlier. Yep. Yeah. Those are um, the uh, each practice description, which we'll we'll create another BMP and we can look at that. Um, but each uh, within the practice description, it should specify, you know, whether you should be drawing the BMP footprint uh, or the respective drainage area. So just definitely take a look at that um, when considering your BMPs and, and adding those in. Um, but yeah, thanks, thanks for the clarification, Ari. That's great. Okay, cool. Have, oh, we actually have one. I think one more. I'm even properly. Yep. Um, <clears throat> 
asks, does the acreage only show up after you click save? If so, do we go back and forth to make the acreage exact? Yeah, so that's a great question. So, um, so really, there are a couple ways around that. So yes, um, the system basically needs a completed polygon in order to estimate the acreage of it. Um, however, we've actually implemented um, a, a means to be able to uh, adjust the acreage amount uh, of the practice manually, uh, just so that you don't have to like sit there and try and like draw out the polygon to match that specific acreage number. Um, and I can show you where that exists. So if we go into our example urban forest buffer, um, we can access this in a couple of different ways. So this is the practice extent that the system automatically calculated. But if we want to override that, um, if we click into this uh, metric report button, this will launch a modal that uh, will give us right off the bat a practice extent uh, uh, tab and the practice extent tab is where you can come in and you can change your acreage. So if this is really six, um, I could save this out and it will actually uh, default to my custom area that I've defined. And again, some things to keep in mind is that uh, we, we are projecting in WGS 84. So there are going to be like slight variances um amongst practice footprints so you, you can definitely make those changes uh in that custom extent box and you can see that when i added that uh six um it's actually updated my practice area which will also um in effect change my my nutrient sediment load reductions based on that based on that value cool so any other questions before we jump into another another bmp here Uh, yeah, Linda here again. Sorry. Yep. Um, no problem. So my question is, and I asked Ari, or I mean, Ari replied, and I just wanted to explain it. So when I uploaded mine, I did not draw it. I uploaded from, I did the file in GIS and uploaded it. But when you say the word batch, I did each one separately. Yep. Like I went in and called one uh, site one, site two, site three. And so I did each site one at a time. Yes. Is that okay? Is that's, that okay? That's totally fine. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And so that the is, um, is definitely a big improvement. I really appreciated that. Cool. Yeah. No, that's great to hear. And um, yeah. And so when I'm referring to the batch, so um, at this view, at your project summary view, uh, basically the expected behavior is is say I have a shape file with you know, 50 practices in it. When I go to upload uh, that batch file, it will create practice cards that I'll fill out for those 50 practices uh, right in line here. Uh, or as you as you had said, um, if I create, I can also do it by creating a practice just as we did one at a time. And inside the practice, if I import that uh, that discrete practice footprint, then it will show up uh, on the map here. Um, so yeah, so I think uh, basically from what, what you've stated, it, it sounds like it, as long as you've got uh, you know practice cards for each of your practices, you should be good to go. And just down the road, uh, some things to keep in mind, we, we are working to actually make it a little bit easier for uh, inline editing of practices. So right now the workflow is you sort of upload your files and then you've got to kind of go back and click through each practice. Um, we are taking steps to move all of that into the map view. So it will continue to improve and, and get better. Um, but just wanted to put that on your radar to, to let you know. Okay. No, that's great. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Um, so great. So let's let's just quickly run through a, a slightly more advanced practice, um, and and we can kind of uh, align on that. And again, I'm happy to field any questions as we get through uh, that next step. So you know, we we created an urban forest buffer, and a number of the practices in the system uh, really sort of follow that same pattern of give it a practice type name, uh, draw the footprint, 
and uh, and then save your work, and then it will actually run those nutrient sediment load reductions. So for other practices like stream restoration that are uh, you know much more complex on an implementation and modeling side, we require uh, additional data to uh, run those nutrient sediment load reductions accurately. And so I wanted to take you guys through this because it's definitely um, a point that we've tried to make it as easy as possible, but you know, given the requirements of the model, it is a little thorny. Um, so uh, let's just go ahead and we'll add a stream restoration project uh, or practice, excuse me. Uh, so just like I did with uh, my forest buffer, I'm gonna say stream restoration and save that. Um, again, we can add our example description. And when I go into practice type, this time I'm gonna select uh, stream restoration. And uh, effectively here, this is where we can um, pick our stream restoration protocols. And let me just make sure. Yeah, that is cool. So we can see with stream restoration, um, it's, uh, it's going to estimate reductions based on additional uh, inputs that can be added via the metrics page. And we're going to go through that together um, so that you guys have a good idea of what that looks like. So I'll, I'll pick stream restoration and save it, uh, and then save all my work here and move on to the next step. So once again, field doc should pop open my map view, and I will uh, roll back to Dramelda Hills. And now I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, draw my stream reach. So let's go ahead and um, I'm just going to rough this out for time's sake, but we'll, we'll draw our reach a stream and, uh, and finish that. And then I can um, go ahead and save my changes. And again, um, just on the measurement side, you know, if you hit view measurements, this will give you uh, stream length. Um, so yeah, so we've successfully drawn our stream and saved it, and then we can close out. Um, and so now there's a little bit of a different uh, behavior here because I created my um, my stream length, and uh, I've you know I've got my linear feet here, but I don't have any uh, nutrient sediment load reductions. Like why is that? And so the reason is that because stream restoration is a little bit more of a complex practice, um, we need to add some more information so that we can run those calculations. So in order to do that, um, there's this little flag that's yelling at you here to say, hey, like we need to um, add uh, metric information. So if I click on that and I go to the model inputs tab. This is where I can add my additional uh, data to be able to uh, correctly generate those nutrient and sediment load reductions. So I'm going to click this modify input button. And this is where, again, I can do things in a couple of different ways. So if you know my stream restoration project is less than 90% designed, um, I can effectively throw in my length of stream, save those inputs, and then right off the bat, I should start to have um, specific load reductions for my um, for my stream restoration, right? So this is basically assigning uh, a coefficient for uh, each foot of stream that's been improved, and it's a rough modeling of nutrient and sediment load reductions for that reach of stream. Um, however, in the case of uh, an instance where I might have a stream reach that is greater than ninety percent designed. Uh, I can actually supply this thing with more data and information and step through each of the protocols. Um, so at this step, this is where we've actually taken a great deal of time to synthesize uh, all of the expert panel reports with, with you know, an amazing amount of help from Ari and Sarah at Maryland DNR and Olivia DeVroe at the Bay Program. Um, and we've essentially emulated the calculations and data fields uh, for each of the respective stream restoration protocols. And so um, I can, uh, I'll give you guys basic nav and just for the sake of time, we'll do protocol one. Um, 
But just to give you guys an idea, um, if you click on these little accordions for the protocols, this will actually give you, you know, full uh, documentation of what you need to provide for each one of the protocols. Um, and then uh, and then you can choose whether or not um, your uh, respective stream restoration practice uh, meets those qualifying conditions. And so again, that process is you know repeated for each one of these protocols. So you know if before you start like entering data, I would definitely advise you know clicking on these little accordions, um, getting a sense for the qualifying conditions and then starting to, to plug in that respective data. Um, so again, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and just do protocol one. And so um, protocol one uh, requires that you uh, provide um, stream sediment erosion rates and annual, annual sediment loadings. And so we're able to do this by uh, entering in our um, data for our bank assessment. Um, and so what you can do is specify a bank ID. Uh, we'll do soil bulk density. So I'm going to say 0.75 pounds. Um, bank erosion rate is 0.75. Uh, eroding bank length is 200 feet. And again, these are all just uh, dummy numbers that I'm putting in. Um, you guys would have these uh, off of uh, your respective specifications. And let's see here, we'll do 0.89 and uh, 0.45. And then I can save these inputs. Um, so again, uh, you can enter multiple bank measurements in protocol one. So if I wanted to add another set of metrics, or sorry, another set of bank measurements, um, I could actually plug these in uh, and that would all get related to my protocol one uh, inputs. And so uh, those can all be entered uh, as you need to. Um, and then once those are entered again, we should see our nutrient yeah. sediment load reductions uh, reflecting. And again, these are much lower. Um, I've kind of put in uh, dummy data based on protocol one, uh, but this is where effectively all of your uh, nutrient sediment load reductions will be uh, estimated and, and pulled in. Um, so let me pause for a second there and I'm happy to answer any questions because I know that was definitely a deep dive in, in into adding more uh, data and information to the practice. Mm -hmm. So any, any questions there? Cool. Oh, it sounds like there might be another one in the chat there, Marla. Um, Allison Santoro raised her hand, so go ahead, Allison. Yeah, hi. Um, I don't know if you're going to cover protocol five, John, um, mm -hmm. since it's really just uh, enter in what you've calculated. Um, I know we've had some, um, there's been some confusion as to how to apply protocol five. That's the um, outfall and stream gully, or sorry, outfall and gully restoration under stream restoration. Um, just um, send an email to Dana, or Ari or I, um, letting us know if you intend to come in for, and for protocol five so we can talk a bit about how you're going to apply it to your project um, and we can kind of work out some of the kinks because we've seen some incredibly high and sort of unbelievable numbers um, uh, under that protocol for a few projects. I'm glad that you mentioned that, Allison, because um, John, we just added um, some text for here. I don't know if you can show it for protocol five. Uh, yeah, for qualifying conditions here. Uh, no, I think we're we oh. like, for protocol five that users upload a PDF, right? So I don't know if you can hi highlight that yeah. really, really quick. So I can definitely do that. So this would be in. Let me just pull up the practice really fast. Um. So this would be in our Let's see. 
Let me just, I'm just gonna go ahead and just add this practice quickly so we can look at it. Um, And actually, did I grab the wrong one? Maybe I did. Let's see. All right, can you confirm? Is that the um? It's not the. Is it the outfall? Uh, is it? It's not stormwater performance no, standards. Right. Sorry for the confusion, John. Um, I was just trying to highlight when you were on the stream restoration module a moment ago, how yeah. now, um. If, yeah, so if you just scroll back to entering input parameters for that real quick. Yeah, this oh. will just take a second. If you click off the protocol one. Yeah, like sorry. I, yeah, that, no, no problem. I know I, I think I, I was unclear. Let me, uh, no, it's all good. Let's see here. So protocol one. Okay. And then, Uncheck protocol one for a second. Yep. Yep. Then go and to scroll down to protocol there you go. You got it. Oh, so you're, I'm sorry. Yeah. No problem. So, if so, folks, just to uh, Allison's point, if you see in the beige text window there, for users who are who are interested in applying for Protocol Five this year, we're just going to request that you also attach a PDF with some supplementary data, um, which is going to be elaborated in that in that um, beige window right there. That's yeah. that's all, John. Yep. And and my apologies. I think where I was getting hung up here, Ari. So. This is actually a good thing to cover off on. So when I selected protocol one, um, basically it's uh, it it wasn't letting me show that language because our system will actually help you stack in the right combo of protocols there. Um, but yeah, this is that's great. That's um that's effectively like down here and all encapsulated and the um the upload for that uh, for that respective information is all available um, in this file uploads button here. Um, so if I click on this, this is what will allow me to upload that document and information as needed. Cool, so any other questions there? We had one question from Karen. Um... Karen is asking, I have a question about stormwater retrofits. Is it possible to enter in the design storm treated or is there a default like the one inch storm? Uh, that's a good question, Ari. Is, um, I think I'll need maybe a little bit of your help on that one, um, not to put you on the spot. It, that would be through this, uh, the runoff, stormwater runoff treatment BMP, is that true? Right, Karen. So we have two different um, BMPs for, um, for uh, either the RR or ST curve. And John, I think Karen is going to be referring to it in this situation, we, how we have two different modules, one of which is the default, um, yep. and then one of which is for practices that are treating greater or less than one inch. Yeah. So I don't know if we want to, if you yep. were able John, to demonstrate um, yep. those two, for, I, maybe only one of them. I think we're kind of running down on time here. Sure. Yeah. So I'll start with the the stormwater treatment one um as this uh this is likely most applicable so um so if you select the stormwater performance standard bmp um treatment depths other than one inch uh this practice type it's very similar to stream restoration in that you will select the practice type uh geo reference the footprint and then again uh, just as we did for stream restoration in model inputs, uh, this is where we can effectively modify those additional um, inputs uh, to generate runoff reduction. And so there's a there's a calculation mode that um, you can toggle, which will load the appropriate uh, treatment inputs. Um, so specifying BMP footprint area. Uh, impervious acres in drainage area, uh, your ponding depth, and then the load source type, which we have the the list of load source types uh, and efficiencies that Matt uh, map to uh, cast. Uh, so we are in alignment there. And again, you can add 
uh, multiple load sources uh, and complete those and save inputs. And when that happens, then you are able to get um, those effective uh, load reductions. So any Very other helpful. questions? Cool. So just quickly in the time that we have left, I know we covered a lot of ground. It's definitely, um, you know, th these trainings definitely make for an action packed hour. Um, but uh, just in terms of uh, support and help, um, again, like we totally acknowledge like, uh, you know, georeferencing each of these BMPs and sort of uh, getting the necessary data to estimate these nutrient sediment load reductions definitely takes time uh, and effort. And, you know, we're truly grateful of, of everybody kind of putting that time and work. Um, one of the components that we've really spent a lot of time on is our support. Um, so if you go to help.fieldoc.org, this is where you can actually access um, full guidance on everything that we've gone through today. Um, as well as some helpful details about how our, our algorithms and calculations run. Um, you know, any of the documentation that we provide is searchable uh, from this view. But if you're like me, I like to talk to a person uh, when I'm stuck on something, it's just a lot easier. Um, so in this case, uh, we do have uh, chat support that we field um, Monday through Friday, nine o'clock to five. And our response time is usually 24 hours, if not sooner. Um, so the easiest way to do this is this little chat button here, uh, send a message. This is where Aaron or myself uh, will be able to uh, get that. We get notified right on our phones and can respond um, and then actually support you guys uh, all the way through in terms of getting your project info in. So definitely, um, feel free to utilize that as frequently as you need. We really want to make sure that um, you guys are able to uh, successfully you know, get through the system and, and the, uh, the necessary entry components. And then the very last, uh, the very last item that I want to make sure I don't forget, because it's definitely an important part, is you know, once we've created our full project, you know, how do we generate that PDF for submission with our grant? Uh, with our grant application. And the, this is a really simple step. So basically, you know, we're gonna go to our full project overview page. And the, the way that I know I'm there is that it'll say projects and then your project title here in the breadcrumb trail. And you can also identify it by seeing, you know, that list of your practices. My next step is to just uh, go over to this uh, sidebar and scroll down until I see the little print button. If I hit that print button, it will say, um, you know, save this as a PDF. I'll go ahead and save that to uh, to my computer, and then I can upload that um, along with my grant application, and that's uh, that's the respective step. So, um, so yeah, so I those are really like the the main you know high level components of Field Doc. Um, again, any questions that you all have. Um, definitely feel free to reach out to us on support. Um, and if there are programmatic questions, um, you know, that's that's really, um, I, I guess Ari is, is probably the best point of contact there. Uh, and, you know, together we can definitely uh, get you guys squared away. So, um, so thanks, I'll, I'll uh, turn it back over to Ari. Yeah, thanks so much, Sean, this is really helpful. It looks like we have, Time for, you know, we have uh, four or five minutes left left in, in the hour here. Um, and I, it looks like we have a couple of questions that just popped cool. up. Um, doo, 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 doo. Gloria. Yes. Uh, go ahead, Gloria. I, I think you also typed in your question, but you want to ask yeah. it? Um, uh, I was sent this um, by DNR um, because I'm submitting an application for a small community project for a living shoreline mm -hmm. and i thought this was going to help me fill out the application um but um this is way over my head is there any place i could go or anybody i can talk to about filling out this application it was just the gateway grants 
Grand Skate Way, sure. Yeah. Um, Gloria, why don't we touch base offline and then I can we can follow up offline here because I understand that, okay. that it seems like that sounds like it's a lot. Um, I don't know. You probably got my email address from the invite for this. So why don't you, if you don't mind sending me an email, we can follow up. Okay. Likewise. Yeah. Sorry, Marlo. I just wanted to, um, hi, my name is Dana Reese. I'm also with Department of Natural Resources. I work with Ari. And if you take a look at my email address in the chat, um, if you want to um, copy me on that email, we can um, try and get you straight and help you um, follow through with your Grants Gateway submission. That would be wonderful. And a question from Lin, uh, Linda, the map does not show up on the PDF question mark. Yes, Linda, that is correct. When you export the PDF from the uh, from the screen that John is on right now, that I don't believe John is gonna include a, an image of the map. Um, that's no, okay for the purposes of your Grants Grand Gateway application. We'll, we'll still, be, still be able to review your field doc information. Um, so that's okay, that's okay, Linda. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really designed just to get the the metric and nutrient and sediment load reductions for your full project. Um, and then, uh, you know, RE and the DNR team does have direct access to the projects uh, online in, in field doc. Um, so those can can also be reviewed in, in tandem. Okay, and we have a question from Brandon. Brandon, can you still get grant funding from a field doc output for stream restoration for a project that's less than 90% design that did not perform the stream restoration detailed protocol metrics, or will you be required to update field doc and resubmit the grant information? Sorry, this is more of a less of a John question, I guess. Um, yes, uh, Brandon, you can definitely still submit your your project um, in you know for review. Um, generally speaking, though, you know it. You know, uh, projects that are farther along in the design process just tend to be slightly more more competitive. But you're welcome to submit your project still, even if you're less than ninety percent design. You're just going to click when you are entering when you're uh, presented with the option for your stream restoration project. At, um, I don't know, John, if you can queue it up really quickly. Yeah. Um, do, do you mind? This is actually very yeah. helpful. I'm glad that you raised this, Brandon. Um, under model inputs, Brandon. Um, what you're going to do if you're less 90% design is you're just going to unclick that checkbox and the calculations and and I guess you're and you're just going to have to enter the total stream restoration length. Yeah. Let's just say it's a thousand feet long the project that you're that you're um, going to be restoring. Click save inputs and the estimated pollutant reduction for that thousand foot project is going to be based on the default. Um, you know. Uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment reductions per linear foot. So it's just not going to require you to input per the parameters. But you're still welcome to apply, Brandon. Yeah, and I guess, um, sorry, just to kind of expand on that a little bit, the question I guess I have is, you know, now obviously for these stream restoration projects, we're required to collect that site-specific data um, in many cases. And, you know, let's say that what we got funding for through field doc with this less than 90% design um, using the field doc application. And then when we go take the site specific data, the actual nutrient reductions are not really realized for what the grant was approved for. Is that something we need to bring up or is it something that once you're approved, you're approved and it's not worth going back and redoing the field doc with more site specific metrics? I could answer that, Ari, if that's okay. Yeah, um, Brandon, this is Dana again, also with DNR. Um, you would need to update your um, your field doc information um, as you move closer to that full design, um, which depending on when you were awarded, if you were awarded, um, would either go into your scope of work um, or immediately updated um, as it was, you know, going through. If you're expecting kind of figures that maybe aren't going to meet the same criteria um, or, or would be, if your nutrient reductions would be lower than um, what you were awarded for, then we would definitely need to have a discussion. If they were higher, obviously that, that's great information. But um, at any point, we would want the actual nutrient reductions um, that you know, your your project would generate. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks. Looks like we're winding down on time time here. Um, thanks again, John and Marlo, for for uh, you know taking taking charge here, and, and everyone for attending this webinar. Um, as I was mentioning to be, at the beginning of the presentation, this is going to be this was recorded and is going to be made available for folks who weren't able to be here today, both on DNR's website and we'll also probably send it out via email. Um, so, uh, Linda, you, yeah. Linda, feel free to stay on, and I can help you with the login after. John, do you mind staying on for a second with me so I can yeah. help with uh, Linda here? Yeah, thanks, everyone, very much. Please, um, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, um, re.engelberg at maryland.gov. I appreciate your time. Thanks, all. Ari, John, and Marlo, thank you so much. Sure thing. Thank you. Thank you, Dana.